Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. Hi, everybody. This is Gail Carson, back with my guest, Lori Lyons, who is the owner and creative director of Ignite Marketing, which is a full-service website design business, and she's also the creator of the online program, Make Your Marketing Simple. Lori, we've been talking about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, uh, how you've grown, uh, what's changed in marketing, and so forth. Um, You know, you mentioned before social media being free and so many, you know, owners getting sucked up in it. And it's, that's the truth. I mean, I read stuff and it says you should only be spending 10 to 15 minutes a day on social media. Then you hear people saying, oh, it takes so much time. I'm on there two, three hours a day, which would drive me totally nuts. <laughs> but, um, you know, where do you come down on that? How do you how how much time? should a person spend on social media and you know how do they make that choice well i think it goes back part of it goes back to what i said earlier about identifying where your market is on social media and going there if you're using it for business and i I think it's important to remember that even though you can post free on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, they are still businesses and they're going to make their money off of how many visitors they get and what their algorithms look like. Because if you are on their sites, you're going to see their ads, which is how they make their money. So I think it's important to remember that, that even though they are, you can post free, they aren't free. So what I tell my, my clients to decide what to do, how to, where to go is first of all, find your market. Let's identify where they are online and then plan for what you want to do. I think that's the biggest mistake a lot of of business owners today make is they just throw anything up on social media that comes to them or, hey, I'm out and about. Let me take a great picture here because this is fun. And spontaneity is great and you want to do that. But there's also you want to plan for where you're going to go on social media. It should be an all encompassing plan. You work with what's on your website, you start with your blog, you know, and you take that blog and you repurpose it in so many different ways. And if you know that you're going to be talking, you know, next month, your theme is going to be um, exercising on vacation. Let's say you're a health coach and, or you're a personal trainer and you want to talk about exercising on vacation in June, June's a big vacation month. Then you know that you've got that coming up. So you can start planning your photographs. You can start planning your Instagram. And if you start planning and know where you're going, then I think you'll find that the time that you spend is a whole lot less because you know what you're going to do. You're not standing there looking at a blank post trying to figure out what you're going to say because you know what you're going to say. And it also helps you with navigating your potential clients to where you want them to go, whether it be to a website or, you know, a freebie that you have or an offering that you have, or just to find out more about you, who you are. So I think that's, those, there's very, there's a lot of value in that and deciding what you're going to do and how you're going to plan for it. Well, that goes back to almost what you were talking about with your processes in the beginning, because uh, that's what we call uh, planning an editorial calendar, basically. Absolutely. You know, and you you have your calendar for the 12 months and you know who you're going to uh, talk to, you know what you're going to say, you know what you're going to write your article about, because now it's not only uh, the ability to to post innocuous things, which I always say, what on (laughs) earth are they doing? In fact, you know, I've had 17 friend requests in the last two weeks. I don't know where they're all coming from, but anyway, 17 friend requests, and I have not okayed them because, well, first I always look and see who their friends are, but once I see that they are friends with people I know, and then I go to what they write, and it's so dumb, and I think, do I really want to be friends with them? And so um, your Facebook keeps saying so and so contacted you X number of days ago. Do you <laughs> and right. uh, you're going to accept or reject? Well, you know, I, it's a very thin line there. So right. I think it's really important for you to uh, uh, realize. I mean, they're always on LinkedIn. You can post articles and 
uh, what's really kind of ticked me off lately about LinkedIn is everybody that contacts me in the very first contact, they're selling me something. Absolutely. And I'm not, you know, I'm not interested in that. So uh, there's just a whole lot of stuff that's going on that we need to sort through. Right. So what, what are some of the crossroads you've navigated, Lori? Well, I think the biggest crossroads from crossroads for me happened in 2006. And it was after my first business that I, I started in the early 90s was a packaging business. And I sold marketing packaging uh, folders, binders, customized index tabs. And at, and this was before internet. So as internet you know, grew bigger and people were started using it, all of a sudden things were going online. HR manuals were being online. Uh, marketing binders were going online. People didn't need to print and do what they were doing. So I kind of had to stop back in 2006 and say, huh, is it going go anywhere? <laughs> you know? And either I had to come up with a whole new way of, of doing business or I, you know, and at that point, quite honestly, Gail, I was just kind of tired of the paperwork and tired of everything. I thought I'm going to go work for somebody else for a while. And, you know, I could either go right or left at the crossroads. So I went straight and I went and worked for somebody else and discovered like a lot of us that have been, you know, self-employed that I'm now unemployable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was miserable. Um, but it was also the, the, you know, the recession jobs were hard. Um, you know, I sell print, which became a commodity. I worked with an, a customer experience speaker who was fabulous. And I learned so much and loved that time, but it was a short term gig. So then I, I, talked myself into a job with a digital marketing agency in 2010. And my job was supposed to be to um, set, set client appointments so he could go and do some prospecting. And my question to him was, do you want to me to just set appointments? Cause I can do that for you all day long and collect my $75 and walk away. Or do you want good value appointments that are going to be worth your time? And do you want me to do some investigating? And if so, I need to learn the business. And so that's kind of the route we took. I learned the business and um, discovered that if a client called in and needed something done and I learned how to do it, it made them happy. It didn't go through the system. It didn't take three or four days. And it kind of taught me. And I still have my WordPress, WordPress for dummies from 2010 downstairs in my library. So <laughs> you know, between YouTube and WordPress for dummies, I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so Basically, what you are saying, Lori, is nothing stopped you. That's what you're saying. Nothing stopped you. When you got to some crossroad, you just crossed over. You, whether you had to take some training or learn something new or look it up somewhere or study it or whatever you had to do, you did to get to the next level. And, you know, a lot of people get to that place where they say, I don't know how to do that, and they stop. So that's very encouraging that you did that. And that's what an entrepreneur has to do. Absolutely. They, they have to kind of get out, they have to do whatever they have to do to get started. Then they have to get out of their own way because, mm -hmm. you know, after all, we do things so well, nobody else could do it. You know, I mean, that's kind of, isn't that our mantra, you know, and then, then we're stuck. Then we're really stuck. Oh, yeah. I so, think standing around wringing hands takes a lot of energy and yeah. <laughs> that energy we can put in a whole other, different way. That's true. That's true. So, so what do you see as the biggest challenge for women in business today, especially those starting out that are over 50? Although I will tell you, I have met enough young women who are extremely talented, who still feel very insecure about a lot of things. So uh, what's your, your advice? Well, I think you know, you hit on it. My, my answer to that would be, you know, just the self-confidence to do and to realize that there is a lot of answers out there. And even if you don't know the right question to ask, if you keep digging and keep, keep searching, you will find the answer that you're looking for. It may not be quite in the form that you thought it would come in, but I think the answers are all out there. You know, I'm a, you know, I laughed and, and said, you know, you can be an expert on anything if it's on YouTube. So <laughs> you know, if we, if we take it, take advantage of what is out there and, and, you know, just say, you know what, self-confidence may be my thing and I need to get over that. So I'm just going to peck at it a little bit each day and, you know, just watch myself. And, and sometimes it's just the small wins that, that turn into the big victories because, you know, we just, if we just keep going and just keep moving. And sometimes I think 
moving forward is standing still and letting and, and reflecting on where you are. I think that's still moving forward to me. Just, you know, the best decision is no decision sometimes that if you just take in where you are and evaluate and reassess, I think you see a lot of answers that will come to you. And, you know, it's kind of, that's kind of a, a woo woo answer, but I firmly believe that everything is within us. We just have to go find it. Well, that is very true. I mean, uh, that is something that you have to do. But, you know, Earl Nightingale said a long time ago, he said, if you spend one hour a day, this was in the days when you listened to tapes uh, or audio cassettes of some sort. He said, if you study anything for an hour a day in, in a two years, you will be an expert. And in five years, you will have the equivalent of a college degree in it. Oh, so uh, now it's speeded up a little bit because yeah. of uh, how and what and what's available to us. But it's so true. Oh, and yeah, so, absolutely. you know, it's 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 really interesting. What would you say? So who is your this ideal client that you're talking about? Um, where what age group? are your clients in primarily you're calling them encore entrepreneurs so are they mostly over 50 most of them are over 50 and if i look around at some of the places that i go and the conferences that i that i'm in and i'll give you a quick example because i know we're, we're probably a little short on time last two years ago i was in an event here in atlanta and there was a woman sitting next to me who was 79 years old and the first thought I had was, oh, please don't tell me I'm going to be doing this when I'm 79. But then I thought, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, so why not? But then my second thought was, good for her. She was at a business coaching event at 79 starting a new business. And the, you know, you look around the rooms, and so many of the entrepreneurs that are in these rooms are either coming out of a corporate job, they've been downsized, laid off, or retired, or they are tired of working for somebody else and want to do something on their own, or they've got an idea and they want to start it. So yes, most of them are, are probably over the 55 to 60 range. I haven't niched it down so much to give you an age because I'm still fine tuning this, this target market and this niche, but most of them have that in common that they've already done some type of career and now they're starting again. And it's a business that they control, you know, that they have to start and, and do their own marketing with. Well, it's interesting because I'm 81 and I go <laughs> like crazy. And one of my very best hosts is 84. My sister just celebrated her 86th birthday and, and um, got the uh, volunteer of the year award from a community organization because she's so active with them. And I had lunch when I was in San Diego with a friend who is 84 years old and she wants to form this uh, business with me, another business. And she is fabulous. You'd never, you'd look at her and you think she's 60, 65 and talented beyond you can possibly oh, that's awesome. imagine. And I followed her for over 40 years in her career. So I know what she's done before, but she's still going strong. Oh and, yeah. And you know, she went to uh, San Diego state to get a degree, a certificate in uh, digital marketing. Oh, that's so great. It's, it's it's just interesting what's yeah. going on. Yeah. So and, what would, and, what would, Gail, ahead. you're like the Energizer Bunny. When I met you, it's like, holy moly, you never stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so, yeah. true. I mean, you know, my you son don't. always says to me, Mom, I don't know how, I could never do what you do. And this is kind of cute, right. too. And our listeners will get a kick out of this. My, my son is sending me to Greece. Because oh, he awesome. promised me to send me for my 80th birthday, and now I'm 81, and I haven't gone yet. So I said, when is this going to ever happen? And, of course, <laughs> he's been waiting to go um, with his husband and me. And I, you know, and then it becomes almost a, 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 a six-figure event. So I said, look, I can go by myself. So I had booked this uh, tour, and it was a flying tour, you know, and going from city to city that I wanted to see. He said, Mom, you cannot go at 81 by yourself on a tour that takes you through airports, lugging your luggage, blah, blah, blah. I said, but I am I do it all the time. I lug yeah, my luggage. I me. fly everywhere. I go everywhere by myself. So he has arranged for a cruise. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> he awesome. Feels, he feels, yeah, he feels a lot, lot better with me on a ship, not going, you yeah. know, even though I'm still going to do a lot of things and take tours and everything, but I, I come back to rest in one place. So I think that's kind of cute. Oh yeah. So, I love that. And send me pictures. Cause I, I want to, Greece is on my bucket list. Yeah. So I'm finally going to oh, get yeah. to see uh Santorini and Mykonos. Oh yeah. And, and yeah. 
Yeah. So, so Lori, what piece of advice would you give to women just starting an encore business? Here I am. Maybe I have no, you know, no experience. I mean, I've got life experience, but I've raised my family. Um, my husband has taken care of me, but I've got this itch and I want to start an encore business. What would you suggest? Just do it. As trite as it sounds, just do it. Find something that you love to do because there's a market out there for everybody and there's a market out there for everything. You just have to find it. Don't wait till things are perfect to get going. You may not have money for hosting. Just start because it doesn't matter. People are going to be attracted to you. They're going to like the humanism and they're going to like your story that, Hey, I'm just starting and most people will want to help. So I'd say just start as trite as it sounds. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work, and it might not, you go on to something else. I mean, the Absolutely. problem is you just cannot get discouraged because, I mean, life gives you, I think it hits you in the face every day. And it's how you approach it and your mindset and how you deal with everything that makes the difference of what, what goes on in your life. So, uh, right. yeah, if it doesn't work, you know, try something else. Like yeah. you said, you found things that didn't work and you changed it up and, and now it's very successful and you're still learning. You're oh, still, absolutely. You know, <laughs> you're absolutely. still looking for better ways. You're still looking for new systems. You're still looking uh, how to make it better. You're still looking for your ideal clients. So I think that's all a part of it. So let's tell our audience a little bit of where they can find Lori. Let's talk about your website. Let's talk about your, your, uh, programs you might have for them and I don't know if you have something you want to offer them at all but sure. you're certainly able to do that tell us a little bit about that sure uh, my my website business is ignitingyourbusiness.com and it is you know you'll find some tips and tricks on on how to make your website better some things that you need to consider what drives people crazy about your website? You know, what's a turnoff on your website? So that's my website business. My online program is make, make your marketing simple.com. And this is a program that will take you through the, the nuts and bolts of marketing in a real easy to use language. And my freebie that I I'm offering everybody for, for listening today is make your marketing simple.com forward slash success. And this is three simple shifts that you can change to give your business momentum and three simple ways to think of different things and to reframe some things differently. Um, so that's a, a freebie for you. Make your marketing simple.com forward slash success. And then I also have, you can find me on Facebook at igniting your business. I'm on Twitter at Lori Lyons underscore, and then LinkedIn at L a Lyons. Well, you're all over the place, Lori, yes. so people should be able to find you, you know, yes. uh, but it's interesting. I think that um, uh, when you look at all the things that are available to people today in terms of marketing, uh, where do you think people make the biggest mistake? Is not identifying their target market. I think it all goes back to that. I see so many entrepreneurs that say, I work with everybody or I work with anybody with a brain, or I work with anybody with skin. <laughs> and that's not simply the case. If you really sit down and think, what is the end result of what you what you help people with? You'll find your answers. Um, I use the, the analogy a lot of a realtor, because we all know 75 realtors. And a realtor will buy you a brick and, you know, or will help you find your, your house. But what they're really doing is they're helping you helping you with your family memories. They're, they're giving you security. They are solving one of the top three, your food, shelter, and, and water of your of basic needs. They are giving you a place to play with your children. They're giving you a place to hang out with your family. So they're not just giving you bedrooms and bathrooms. They're giving you memories. And that's what they really do. That's true. And uh, I know that uh, there are certain realtors that, Make sure they know everything about the shopping and the schools and the doctors and the dentists and everybody in that whole community so that they become the resource for the person who's buying the home. They just don't Absolutely. do the transaction and they're done. And of course, that's how you build up uh, uh, references and clientels, even though most people, you know, stay in their home for a long period of time, except I think millennials are moving around a lot. I don't know. Yeah. But the other thing, this is the other thing I think that's changed uh, in business. You know, um, 
my first business I built from zero to seven offices and 350 people, mm. which I never want to do again, by the way. <laughs> and then uh, my second business was going on the road as a speaker for 20 some years. And uh, I had um, an assistant and um, she took care of everything while I was on the road. And she she really was good. I mean, I, I didn't realize how much she had done until it came, came time to clear out the office. And I saw all the files that she had and everything else. But <laughs> she was amazing because she could she could just, you know, she found me wherever I was. And this is before cell phones or anything right. else. I remember I was in, I don't know, someplace like Namibia and uh, South Africa. And uh, I I pulled up to the the desk and I wanted to register and oh we have a message for you from and it was from her you know she just managed to always track me down now it doesn't have the same bad vibration if you're operating out of your home I mean home offices now are kind of the way to go oh, yeah. uh, or or the shared space the we works kind of thing where people are sharing space so um you know it's it it lessens uh, the overhead that people have to have if they're going into an encore type of business. So it's okay as long as you can, you know, uh, you've got the, the space or, or you can eke it out in a closet or wherever you have to be. <laughs> and, um, you know, you don't have people interrupting you. I mainly have my my two cats, one of whom is very vociferous. And every once in a while, you hear a meow Aww. in the background, you know, but... <laughs> Um, you know, that's kind of who I am and what I do. But um, I want to remind everybody again how to reach you. So the first thing is your website, which is Igniting, and that's I-G-N-I-T-I-N-G, IgnitingYourBusiness.com. The second thing is you have a website, MakeYourMarketingSimple.com, and that's for your online program. Right. Then, then you have um, a special offer for them which is, um, is that at your igniting your business or it's, your, mar- it's, no, it's your make your marketing, make your marketing simple, simple. dot yeah. com forward slash uh, success. So there's all these things that, that Lori has for you. And um, I really think that you should go there, take advantage of what she has to, to offer and uh, see what she, she can do for you. Because if you're thinking about, yeah, this is what I'd like to do. Oh, I'm too old. Oh, and maybe I'm not too old. Oh, I need a website. Maybe I don't need a website. Go talk to Lori, <laughs> see what she has to say, and then you can uh, make some intelligent decisions. So we have about three minutes left, Lori. What have we not discussed or what have we not talked about that you think our audience needs to hear? Well, you know, I am a very big Atlanta Braves fan, and we could talk about the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are they doing? <laughs> no, love love my baseball. But, no, it's, you know, I, I think for, to wrap this all up, for Encore Entrepreneurs or anybody who's an entrepreneur, I think there is nothing more that gives me, myself, more pleasure then to work with somebody to help a small business and that can be, you know, website or marketing. But if you're in the, in, in a business that is helping other people, there is nothing more satisfying than, than taking what you do and you do well and you offer your services to somebody else, you know, which brings up a whole nother podcast on selling. But you know, my, my belief is if you're helping and you have something of value, you're not selling, you're offering your services and either they can take it or they don't. And, you know, that's okay because not everybody is for everybody else. But I just think there's nothing better in life than to, than to have your own business and to be able to control where it goes and to steer that ship in the direction that you want it to go. That's fantastic. I certainly agree with you. And, uh, and you know, it may also be that you find that that's not the business you should be in. And maybe it, it, it turns you into something else because you never know. When you talk to people, you network with people, you find out what their likes are, what are they doing. You may find out a whole other industry that you never thought about. I know there's somebody that is a mentor of mine who says there's often a business within the business. And so, um, you know, you might find that one of the things you offer, which is just a sideline, turns into the big major focus of your business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, you never know. It, yeah, well, it's kind of how I started to make your marketing simple because I found out that I was helping so many people with the basic marketing when we're working on their website. And so many people didn't understand it 
that I thought, you know what, this can be a kind of a cool program. I'm doing it anyway. So let me make it into a program. So it, it kind of was an, uh, an offshoot of that. And that very same thing, it's what happened with that is how it, how it came about. So yeah, you never know what paths are going to, you know, if you keep your eyes open and, and are willing to take the, the lesser travel path, you never know. Well, you've heard it here from Lori Lyons, <laughs> ignitingyourbusiness.com. Thank you so much for being with us, Lori. I'm oh, sure our you. audience really benefited from it. Oh, I had a great time. Thank you for having me on.